What do you say to me, big boy? <laughs> <laughs> I do not talk. What's up, guys? So we're back with some commentary. So today I worked out with Connor. Uh, we did back and biceps. Um, so the first movement that we did for back and biceps is the kneeling lat pull down. So for the kneeling lat pull down, I personally do this exercise because I have an imbalance on my left shoulder um, and my left arm in general. So when I do a normal lat pull down, I will pull down, but I lack the flexibility slash strength in my left arm. So sometimes when I do lat pull down, my right side will be pulling down farther. Um, so I'll do the kneeling lat pull down as a way to sort of balance out my left side and get equal depth, um, or at least attempt to. So this is a very good exercise to fix imbalances. So the key to this exercise is you start palms away from you, and as you come down, we rotate, finish palms toward us, squeeze our lats, and stretch back up, rotating on the way up. So this is going to incorporate a full range of motion on your lats, as well as create equal, um, you have to create equal force with both arms so that both arms are doing the work. So this is why I like to do this. Um, I like to start my back workouts either with lat pull downs or pull ups. So these are, this is, these are great exercises to start your back workout with. Just to get a nice stretch, full range of motion, finish, squeeze, stretch up. Um, and then here you just see Connor casually doing six reps with the full stack. So he's a beast. We know. So moving on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't do this at home. Yes. That's what happens when... You're pulling more weight than you weigh. <laughs> so moving on to the next exercise, we switched to cable rows. So cable rows, normally I don't do these as much, but today we opted to. Um, the key to cable rows, grab the bar at the bottom. When you pull, this is going to incorporate more lats, and you'll be able to drive with your elbows more instead of your arms um, the other thing is when I'm pulling right in the crease of your back, you want to pretend that there's a pencil there. So when you pull, you're going to squeeze, try and pretend uh, to squeeze that imaginary pencil. Um, that's just going to incorporate more lats. Um, it's going to help you better get a better squeeze um, and incorporate full range of motion. Um, other than that, just keep the knees slightly bent. Keep your chest up. Maintain good posture. Um, to get that full range of motion, you'll see a lot of people, some people kind of abuse the seated row, um, where they use a lot of momentum um, to do this exercise, but the best thing to do is get that stretch, pull, contract. I'm not using momentum at all, I'm controlling the weight as much as I can with that contraction at the end. And again, you're going to see Connor doing <laughs> the full stack um with ease uh his background connor he was a d1 swimmer at providence college so naturally you know swimmers their whole life they're gonna have strong shoulders and a strong back um so you know when it comes to back connor is just a freak <laughs> So the next back exercise that we did are the high rows. So the high rows are a great exercise to hit your traps, your lats, and your rear delts. So for the high rows, personally, I like to do this to hit my traps mostly. Um, this is the most functional way to hit your traps. Um, a lot of people will do shrugs or you know high rows, all that, to hit your traps, but it's not functional. Your traps aren't meant to, to shrug up to your ears. They're meant to roll back, okay? So typically when you do shrugs, you're putting a lot of pressure on your rotator cuff and most likely will create an impingement um, in your traps or in your rotator cuff. So the key to 
be functional with your traps is is to stick to high rows to deadlifts those type of movements um, where it's a more functional movement for your traps um, also when you're doing the high rows try to grip them at the underhand part of the bar um, and pull with the elbows so most for all back exercises you really should be pulling with that elbow that's going to incorporate your lats more instead of pulling with your arms and getting more bicep um, other than that just keep your chest up against the pad make sure it's at a good height your chest should be in the pad that's how you know it's a good height um, and then just try to do a little pause at the end just to incorporate a little more rear delts So moving on, we went to the front pull downs. So for front pull downs, uh, this is similar to the kneeling pull downs that we did. It's a unilateral machine. So we did isolated. We did one arm at a time. Again, what you want, what you want to do with this machine specifically, is you want to hook it. So only using your four fingers, okay, not using your thumb. Hook onto the bar, and just pull with those four fingers. By doing that. You're going to use more of that elbow to drive down and get a better contraction on your lats. So instead of using that thumb, again, use the four fingers. And these are just your hooks, okay? You're not using them to pull at all. Hook on and drive with the elbow down, okay, in this type of motion. What you want to do at the end, stretch, contract stretch contract that's your main focus when you're doing this exercise um, this is also a great way to build more bicep uh, the underhand motion is going to use a lot of your bicep and uh, it's just uh, another way to hit your bicep so moving on from here we did the sevens or 21s or whatever you like to call it so basically we did them with dumbbells a lot of people do it with the barbells for me personally, I don't really like doing curls with barbells, again, because I find that one arm works harder than the other. So the best way to correct that is with dumbbells. So we did sevens, 21s. So your first movement is from your thighs to belly button. So you're curling up, rotating on the way up because that gets that full bicep range of motion, like that light bulb twisting, okay? So first one, thighs belly button thighs belly button once you do seven like that you switch from belly button to chest okay this motion right here again rotating keeping the tension on that bicep and then the last part of the motion is full range of motion so you're starting from your thighs to chest okay thighs to chest what you want to make sure what you're doing is not bringing the dumbbells all the way up so that you're right here because that takes tension off of the bicep. What you want to do is make sure you're right in this range. Keep it on the apex where the most tension is on your bicep. Okay. Um, so we did, what is that, 20 pounds? Um, you really, it's a lot of reps, so basically it's 21 reps in a set. So you want to keep it at a weight where you can control it, where you can squeeze it, um, and when you can get to at least the last set of curls that full range of motion so find a weight that you're comfortable with that you can control that you can squeeze and that will be your best bet so this is the part in the video where the lights in the gym go out um we were just lifting and then actually the lights in the gym and the mall went out so we had a little power outage and they ended up closing the gym like a half hour later luckily we're to the end of our workout so it didn't really bother us but in this exercise, this is an isolated, how do I say this? It's like a concentration curl um, with your arm against the bench. Don't really know what to call it. We'll just call it concentration curl. Um, so basically here, I'm starting with my palm away from me. Um, arm is against the bench. You curl up, again, rotating. Try to get that pinky to flare up. Get that full range of motion, that nice squeeze in the bicep, then rotate back down. So you're rotating up, squeezing, coming back down. Rotate up, squeeze, back down. We only use 20 pounds for this. Um, again, just focusing on that contraction. I don't want to do a weight that I can't control, that I can't squeeze my muscle with. 
Um, that's just the rule of thumb that I use when I work out. Um, so find the weight that is the most challenging to you, um, that you can contract your muscle with, and that is safe for you. Um, so we ended up doing, I'd say, we did four sets, I want to say four sets of 15 on this, um, which was great. We, we You get a nice pump from it, um, and again, you're focusing on one muscle at a time, uh, not worrying about uh, if one arm is pulling more than the other or curling. Um, yeah, that's just our main focus for this. Do you play zero hour? I play zero hour, but it's, it got too crazy because they had zero a bunch hour. of mini factions, like sub factions. Yeah, zero hour, I played the infantry general for China. Oh, did you? Regular general, they just play China. I used to play GLA. Just because you don't have to, you don't need electricity. Yeah. I like zero hour, you had like the heroes. Oh, uh, yeah. So it was like Black Lotus, Carmen Gel. So, or German oh, Kell, yeah, German Kell, yeah, yeah. Sniper. Oh, he was in the uh, Command and Conquer oh, General. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was, he was, he was sick. In our last exercise, we did reverse curls. So we are just doing this to hit our forearms and a little more bicep at the end of our workout. Um, we did more of like a burnout. We did four sets of 15, um, I think 20 pounds. Nothing crazy, just to get a nice uh, end of the workout pump into that muscle. Um, that's pretty much it. That was the whole workout. It was a really good workout. We went super heavy. Um, for most of our sets, we did two warm-up sets, and then we did four, four sets of uh, heavy weight for our working sets. So we did, I think, we kind of all over the place. We did 12-10-8-6, uh, we did 8-6-4-3, um, just challenging ourselves, switching it up, um, going heavy consistently, and honestly, I felt great, so I was really happy with today's workout. Um, yeah, so that's going to be it for this, guys. I hope the commentary helped. Um, I hope you guys like me switching it up. Um, and this is just me, you know, I'm not necessarily trying to to motivate or to um, inspire or anything like that. I'm just trying to share um, my current knowledge of working out, um, some tips and tricks that I learned, and um, just really just pass it on. So, like, quick story. Um, when I was in high school, I'd say my sophomore year um, in high school, I was starting to train for football seriously in the weight room. Um, I'm, there's a man that is a very good friend, family friend of ours. Um, his name is Carl Bodner. Uh, he still works at the high school that I went to. Um, this man dedicated three years plus, I'd say, because I worked out with him after high school as well, but he dedicated three plus years uh, with me in the weight room um, at least three days a week, showing me everything that I know, teaching me everything and without asking for a dime. Um, and you know, that's basically what I wanna do with my channel. I'm, you know, like I said, whether I motivate or not, um, I really just wanna share what I know on this platform, social media, because it can extend to everyone everywhere um so this is just me of a way of just giving back and i really hope you guys enjoy it um leave comments whatever let me know what you guys want to see what you want to know um i really just want to help out any way i can uh in whatever way possible so i really appreciate you guys watching this video uh there's gonna be more to come i'm trying to post monday wednesday friday three days a week and uh yeah that's it so I really appreciate you guys watching, and you have a good day. Take care.